welcome to episode two of the DIY electric piano series. I want to say thank you to everyone that watched part one. I appreciate the comments, likes and subscriptions. It makes the effort that goes into these videos worthwhile. Okay, so the next part I want to look at is the keys and the key bed. When restoring a Rhodes piano, one of the first steps is to level the keys and work up from there. I'm going to look at the keys of a Fender Rhodes as a starting point. So this is the Fender Rhodes key and it has quite a few features. So it's got a centralised hull, this is for the key pin that holds the key in position. A hole at the front, this stops the key from spinning. It features a notch where the hammer can drop into this key. It also features parts glued on at the back to form the pedestal. It features a glued on part for that central hole, which I guess strengthens the key there. It has felt inserted in these key pin holes. It also has a notch on the bottom. I'm really not sure what this notch is for. Is it for weight saving? Is it for setting how the action feels? I'd really like, uh, if anyone knows what this is for, please let me know. And then it, it's got a key cap glued onto the top. And then it's also got like a tapered design. So as it gets towards the pedestal, the key gets thinner. So that's a lot of features. And if we were to recreate all of them, it's going to be quite time consuming and difficult to incorporate them all in this DIY piano. So for the pedestal design, there are a range of different shapes over the years. And to allow us to try them all, I've created a model of each of the pedestal shapes. This is going to screw onto what we create as a key. And this allows us to try any shape and determine which one we feel is best. So my plan is not to use key pins. Now bear with me. I know this is going to be controversial, but I think there's a lot of skill required here and we might be able to design some of it out. My goal is to design a plastic bridge for the keys. Now I'm sure you're probably thinking this has been done before. And once more I want to 3D print this, reducing the need for any skill. Um, the Mac 2 Rhodes featured plastic keys with plastic key pins and to me this is a great idea. It, remove some of the inconsistencies so it should have been a better design. Now I know some people love that era of roads and some people don't but that's up to other people to decide. But I really believe that we can get something to work here. So this is the design I've come up with. I've measured the key and I've created a plywood blank. So this is based on what the actual size of the key is inside my piano. I've used plywood as it's cheap available, easy to work with, and the thickness is reasonably well controlled. So I've come up with two parts. One's a comb that holds the key and provides a pivot point. And then there's a second comb that stops the lateral movement, stopping the keys from spinning. So this is the design printed out. Um, it seems to work, but I'm not convinced it's going to be very strong. Hmm. <laughs> that didn't work at all. Oh. Okay, so let's try again. So I've increased the width of these supports, but this means the wood that I've cut for the key doesn't fit. So we need to nibble some wood off the sides to fit. So trying this, yeah, it seems a bit better, but once more, I'm still not convinced in its strength and this is going to be more complicated to manufacture. My keys now have got an extra process of nibbling out from each side. We've removed the wood from the layers of plywood that give the key the strength that we needed. So I think it still needs some design. Also having two combs requires alignment and this works well for a short length for say five keys but to do a whole piano I think there's going to be trouble. But 
Yeah, let's drown. Yeah, this, this, this needs a bit of work. Okay, so back to the drawing board. So first thing, let's move the comb and the bridge into one, double the length, and this also allows us to change the direction that we're gonna print this, so we can print it so the layers are gonna not be torn apart with any side load. We're gonna move away from plywood keys as well, and we're just gonna chop out some slimmer solid wood. I've used pine for this, but in production, I suspect something harder would be better, um, such as maple. I reckon that could work quite well. And then all we need to do is add a little notch on the underside at the pivot location, and this is going to stop the key sliding backwards and forwards. I'm not going to create the entire key in this video, so there'll be one in the future about key caps and any other features we need to design in, but for now, this will be fine. So I've printed a bridge and put a key in and this seems to work quite well. It seems to respond as I'd expect it to. So next step is I want to incorporate what we created in the last video and build just a little rig where this is going to interact with a hammer. So I've just screwed this down to a bit of plywood and created a support for the hammer. So yeah, this seems to work really well. Um, I don't think this is the best solution, but I think it's the best solution if you consider you want something cheap and repeatable um, that possibly anyone could do. And I know a lot of people sacrifice pianos to make um, project pianos. And I'm in mixed minds of that. It's never comfortable to chop up a piano, in my, in my opinion. Um, not, not unless you really have to. So I like the idea of creating our own keys. We, we might do something different. We'll see how it works out. These might bind up and be terrible, but at least we tried. But yeah, I think that's enough for this video. We've kind of made a good progress. It's starting to look a little bit like a piano. So yeah. If you haven't subscribed already, it means a lot if you do that. Um, and yeah, watch out for the next video. Thank you.